Am I the a-hole for canceling my daughter's horse riding camp application after she canceled her brother's job application? I'll try to summarize this entire conflict that happened over a month slash barely two months now. I have two children, Mia 16 and Ricky 18. Mia used to work at a local coffee shop for two months, but didn't commit to nor respect Tom and had no work ethics. As a result, she got fired, but she didn't accept it and kept begging her former boss to get her job back but couldn't. She was so heartbroken over losing her first job this way. And besides, the coffee shop is or used to be her favorite place. Also, she was saving up to attend a horse riding camp but didn't have enough money, so I promised to pay for her enrollment and application. A week after she got fired, she learned that her brother Ricky was trying to get her previous job. She went mad and kept begging me to not let Ricky apply to work at the coffee shop because her friends will find out and say the manager picked her brother over her. I thought that was overdramatic of her. And plus, Ricky is the one to decide which place to apply at, so I told her to leave it alone. Me refused, saying if I don't do something, then she will. Days later, Ricky told me and his mom that someone logged into his email and canceled his job application at the coffee shop. He said he spoke with the manager and found out someone sent him a rude email pretending to be Ricky, saying he was canceling his job application and he no longer was interested in working at the shop, while adding insults to the coffee shop and the staff at the manager himself, etc., etc. The manager kicked Ricky out and even banned him from the shop completely. I immediately shouted for Mia to come downstairs, and after pressuring her, she admitted sending the rude email to the coffee shop manager to make Ricky lose the job opportunity. She defended herself, saying she felt awful that Ricky was planning to take her place at the shop and couldn't let it happen. I was mad I told her I'm automatically canceling her horse riding camp application and taking the money paid back. She tried to argue and cried, saying I promised, and that I knew how much this meant to her. But I said that was an automatic response to what she did point blank period. No buts or ifs, besides the fact she had to apologize to Ricky. My wife called me an a-hole for not seeing where Mia was coming from and said my love for her was conditional, since I promised to pay for the camp but took the money back as soon as she upset me. Mia hasn't been talking to me for two months except for basic words like goodnight, goodbye, etc. And my wife said Mia has every right to not talk to me ever again if she wanted. I wonder if I went too far or whether Mia deserved her punishment. I won't even get started on how awful Ricky felt, slash his feeling because he's developed trust issues ever since. Now for the top comments. Not stay home. She did this to herself. Yep, and given mom's response, I can see why she feels her behavior was okay. Holy crap, yes. That mom is a huge problem here. Listen to this, Opie. Ricky wasn't only hurt by his sister. He was and has most likely been hurt by his mother for a very long time. This blatant favoritism didn't happen overnight. He needs to know that he has at least one parent who won't see him as second best to his sister. He needs you to put your foot down and say, enough. I won't let you treat my child this way. It's not right. Not today, home. She did it to herself. Does your wife usually favor your daughter like this or is it a new development? You guys should have made her go to the coffee house explain what she did and apologize to them as well as cancel the camp. Does your wife think there should be no consequences? Usually, yes. Does your wife think there should be no consequences? No, my wife thought I should have used regular punishment like taking her phone, having her care for the garden slash pets for a week, or clean her wash dishes. But I thought this type of punishment wasn't enough because what she did was not a small mistake. It was permitted. Ricky not only lost a job opportunity, he no longer goes to the coffee shop, which is also his favorite place, too. You two need to take a step back and reevaluate Mia's behavior. Poor work ethic, unreliable, lying, vindictive? Ask your wife if this is the person she wants her daughter to be. At 16, she should know better. Obviously, she feels the world should make allowances and excuses for her as much as her mother does. Mia needs to apologize to the coffee shop manager immediately. Perhaps tell her you would reconsider horse camp if she does so, in person, and apologize to her brother. Not today, home. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not continuing to pay for my cousin's college and told my sister not make that choice until she is 25? I, 25 female and 24 female sister, lost our parents to a car crash caused by a drunk driver 10 months ago. Our parents left everything to my sister, Taylor, and I with a 50-50 split with the stipulation we would not have control over my parents' assets until we are 25. 
Until then, our Aunt Sue, 53 female, and Uncle Rob, 63 male, would have the controlling power of our parents' assets. They are my mom's brother and sister. With me being 25, I have full control of my half of my parents' assets. However, my sister does not. If she wants to spend any money, she has to get approval from Sue and Rob. It took about 8 months for us to get our inheritance and finally have all my parents' assets figured out. My uncle Rob wanted all of us to go out as a family and celebrate my parents one last time now that the rashes are spread and all of the legal and paperwork stuff is finished with. We all go to dinner, my mom's whole side of the family, about 20 of us. All throughout dinner, Aunt Sue would make comments about how much money Taylor and I have at such a young age. We asked her multiple times to stop, and she would apologize and change the topic. When dessert finally comes, Aunt Sue asks, Well, your parents were paying for her 20 male son Alex's college. How should we get that figured out for the fall semester? Taylor and I knew my parents were paying for school. We also knew Alex has almost failed out twice. It has only completed one full year of classes, despite him being in college for three years. Taylor and I both knew my parents were going to stop paying for Alex's college since he wasn't taking it seriously. They gave him multiple warnings. Taylor looks at Sue and says, Can we please talk about this later? This really isn't the time. Aunt Sue gets mad and said, You both graduated college and have great jobs, and make enough to support yourself without the money your parents left for you. She said some other stuff, but to summarize, she thinks we need to learn how to be less selfish and shared our inheritance with the rest of the family and that we have to pay for Alex's college, since that is what my parents said they would do. At this point, I blew up. I told my aunt that she needs to stop asking about the money. It isn't money our parents gave us. It is the money we inherited because our parents died. I would trade all the money to the world to have just another year with them, let alone the 20 plus years they should have had. I told her that she was being a greedy witch and that I would do everything in my power to make sure that she never gets a penny from the inheritance and that neither Taylor and I would be paying for Alex's college moving forward. I leave the table, pay for the whole dinner and leave the restaurant. Taylor follows me out and we leave. Neither one of us has reached out to Sue or the rest of our family and they have not reached out to us. Not today, home. She is trying to manipulate you into giving her and Alex the inheritance. It's clear that money is the only thing important to her. Your feelings, grief, and relationship mean nothing to her. You have no obligation to share any of the inheritance with anybody. Good for you for sticking up for yourself instead of continuously taking her crap. The stupid thing is that by assuming, they've messed things up for themselves. If they'd come to them at an appropriate time and ask respectfully if they'd consider paying their son's college, they might have got a more favorable response. By assuming it was a done deal and forcing the issue in a public family celebration, they've pretty much ensured they'll get nothing ever again. Quite likely an issue of pride that wouldn't let them show any kind of deference or humility to their younger relatives. The way she did it was a ploy. Asking them in public means they might be embarrassed to say no and agree to it. Definitely not day home, but I would cut them and anyone else out if they mention it. Not day home, you are totally correct. I tell this to anyone with greedy family. Would they do the same thing for you? You're not your parents. Your parents' money is not your family's money. It's only yours and your sister. Plus, if you pay for this, she would probably ask you to pay for other stuff like food, rent, etc. So she's just leeching off of you. Also, is there a way to stop your mom's family from using this inheritance? They may have just waited for you to get it to try and guilt trip you to buy it. They only have guardianship, so they cannot touch the inheritance. They can only prevent Taylor from touching it until she is 25. But that is only for about 9 more months. And I have let Taylor know if she needs to access her inheritance for any reason, I will give her whatever she needs so she doesn't have to ask our aunt or uncle. Not today all at all. Good for you getting an attorney involved too, and I would make sure she could not take money out herself. Look into having a forensic accountant, if you suspect she is taking money herself also. Next story. Am I the a-haul for not buying my sister gifts to celebrate the birth of my nieces? Short version. My sister had twin girls in July and because we are no longer in contact, I didn't send anything. She's mad and my parents were upset with me for not sending something for the girls at least. This has become such an issue, she's blasting it to every family member she can. Background. Three years ago, my sister 29 female and I 31 female lost pregnancies a week apart. She had a miscarriage at 13 weeks and I had one at 19 weeks. She had wanted to be a mom and was trying since the age of 19. But she had suffered a miscarriage at 9 weeks, 
just a few months before her 13-week loss, and I knew she would want all the time and attention from our parents, so I kept mine private for a week. It was hard, but I knew she would not like me sharing the news sooner. When the time came, my husband told our families. She was furious at me for taking over in her time of need, and how it should have been no big deal for me since I terminated a pregnancy when I was 18. She told me she was the one really suffering, that I had wanted to wait for kids and threw away a chance at being a mom in very horrible circumstances years ago. So how dare I pile on pain when she needed everyone around her? She told me she hoped I suffered for the rest of my life for what I did to her and told me to drop dead. In the last three years, my husband and I discovered through more losses that we would need treatment for me to carry a healthy pregnancy. So we have been saving in private. We never told anyone about the other losses either. In part because I didn't want to deal with any mistreatment from my sister. Now it's expected that I will bridge the gap, I guess. Or maybe just do everything possible to be an aunt to her daughters. But I'm choosing to stay away and to remain no contact with my sister after everything that happened. And this has just further proven how she will treat me. I hate upsetting my parents, though. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She has a track record of making everything about her. How she is the one who really has the right to be the center of attention all the time. You don't keep in touch, so why would she expect that you would send a present? Besides, look at all the attention she is getting by making herself a victim. That is your gift. She gets double the attention. One for giving birth and two for being a victim and not getting presents from you. I picture her laying on her fainting couch with the back of her hand on her forehead saying, Why is she so mean to me? While everyone coos over her misery. Not stay home. Your sister is awful. It wasn't just her time of need. It was yours too, and you had a decency to wait to tell people. You have no obligations towards her or her kids. Why would you send gifts to a woman who hoped you suffered for the rest of your life for having a miscarriage at the same time as her, and who told you to drop dead? You're doing as ask, dropping dead and letting her be an even bigger a hall today than she was back then. Good luck with your treatments. Exactly. I cannot imagine going through a miscarriage at the same time as my sister, and not seeing it as an opportunity to support each other. Hey, that horrible overwhelming emotional thing you're going through? Me too. Let's get through this together. OP, your decision to go and remain no contact is completely understandable and sounds like a healthy choice for your mental slash emotional health. Good for you for sticking with it. Also, your parents' feelings aren't your responsibility and you have nothing to feel bad about on that front, especially if they're directing their disappointment at you and not at your sister for behaving so unspeakably horribly in the first place. Not today, home. Life is too dang short to spend time, money, or energy on people who don't bring you peace. Your sister was selfish when she lost her pregnancy three years ago, and instead of commiserating with you, she blamed you for your loss, and then said she wanted you to suffer. There's no way in hell I'd ever speak to her again, let alone send her presents for procreating. Your parents can't force you to have a relationship with your sister, and if they try to pressure or guilt you into it, they're going to end up pushing you away. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hall for my response when my stepbrother insisted to know the name my husband and I picked for our son? My dad married my stepmom when I was eight, so I pretty much grew up with my stepmom and her family. I have two stepbrothers, and my older stepbrother is the joking, teasing, busy buddy type. He's married and has two kids, by the way. This whole thing started when he started making fun of my baby name choice before I had my two oldest sons. Even though the two previous names my husband and I chose were normal like Jason, Chris, Adam, etc. But my stepbrother would constantly make fun and criticize the name, saying things like, Poor kid, isn't that the name of a famous adult movie star? And this was my bully's name, so I'll remember my bully whenever I call my nephew's name. He'd criticized the name so much that I had to change it. He got my stepfamily on board of making fun of my choices too. It's frustrating, as it excuses behavior by saying it's teasing slash giving advice. I felt bad because it ruined those names for me and caused me to choose other names. I'm currently pregnant with my third and it's a boy. Once we announced the gender of our baby, my stepbrother kept pestering me about the name we chose wanting to know what it was. I just kept ignoring him after he kept bringing this question up in every family function. Last week was the final straw. I was visiting my dad and stepmom. And my stepbrother asked me to tell him the name I chose for my son, but I refused. 
Then he tried to get the family to pressure and corner me into spitting it out, as he said. But I blew up at him, saying I won't tell him because then he'll make me hate it so much that I'd change it. After he hassled me with his rude opinions and jokes and memes on the name, I told him my husband and I really, really like the name and won't risk giving him the chance to harass us into changing it. My stepbrother stared at me, looking stunned. He then looked at his wife, then excused himself to the bathroom. He looked very upset. Everyone noticed and gave me some looks. My dad later pulled me aside, saying what I said to my stepbrother and the way I spoke to him in front of everyone was unacceptable. He said he cared enough about me and my children to give me advice and share his opinions on my name choice, but I treated him with hostility and should prepare an apology for insulting him like that. Things have been tensed since then. Not day home. Why does that brother get to treat you like crap? But you have to apologize for standing up for yourself. Your dad needs to step up and have your back. Also. It's just so weird that stepbrother is getting involved in this business. Is he competitive or jealous? Maybe. I would triple down to tearfully complain that he is harassing a pregnant woman. My family think that's how he is, and I shouldn't overreact to his comments. Is he competitive or jealous? Maybe. I'm not sure why he'd be. Honestly, that's how he is. He is an a-hole. You treated him like an a-hole, and somehow everybody's shocked. Not day home. My dad later pulled me aside, saying what I said to my stepbrother and the way I spoke to him in front of everyone was unacceptable. What about everything he has said to you? And he insults his throne about your kids' names. I don't know what his issue is, but he has no right to be upset over being called out on the way he's acted. Yes, exactly what you said here. Honestly, I somehow find myself blamed no matter how I react, saying I'm overdramatic and oversensitive and take no constructive criticism.